So, my presentation is about, uh, about uh, uh, mood in some way. So, what I would like to, to talk is about how uh, colors could or can influence in some way the mood of people when they are walking in the street, so when they are inside of the, of the city, what kind of feelings and what's happened, and mix the colors with the shapes. So, the main shapes and the main colors, the meaning of that. Of course, it's something that we already know, that it is already used since the past, since the Paleolithic time. And everyone knows that. I don't, it's not necessary to talk about that, but everyone knows that uh, uh, in the past someone painted inside of the big caves uh, with blood and uh, with sand mixed with water, for example, in Egypt, in Greece, in Gothic time, in Burgo. In all times, in all cities, in all places, colors are always very important. But the meaning of colors, sorry, but the meaning of colors, well, are changing all the time. And they are changing because, really because of our culture. And this is very interesting. Last uh, two months ago, I was here in Vilnius trying to find what it is the most beautiful color for, for uh, the most happy color for Vilnius people. So I make a workshop with small children until around 13 years old, and then I have done a workshop uh, with students with more than 18 and 20 years old. And it was very interesting what I discovered. I will tell in the end after this, because it's nothing to do with this, but it's just to tell you that I'm trying to find what color we should have for the circle, for the triangle, and for the square. So what it is the meaning of the colors? Of course, Kandinsky, in the past, in the Bauhaus time, in the 40s, he already started that conversation. But, well, that colors, it was the colors of that moment, the moment of the war. So the feeling that people had about that colors, it's different today. For example, when we are talking about colors, we can understand that colors improve the mood of people and improve the way how we understand the world. In these three examples here, they are very, very simple examples, but we can show that on the first one, it's like a warehouse, a simple warehouse, but just because they're that color, that <coughs> vertical colors, improve the spirit of the place, and then we have a reference. We can say that my house is on the left side of that building, or it is in front of that building, or that my meeting point is on that building, because it's a reference of the place. On the other side, it's, for example, the opera house in Oslo, and it is totally white. And, well, it's white because they, they want to mix with the snow, but at the same time, this, this object of architecture, that it is like a sculpture, lives because of the shadow, you know, because without the sun and without the light, this, it will be really uh, empty. But because of the shadow, people can feel emotion because they can feel and understand the shape and the layout of the building. And now we have another building that it, it is in Portugal, it is a museum, it is all made in concrete. But just because it is orange, you know, people can say, well, this is in contrast with all of the other buildings that we have around. And this is in a, in a place that it is almost heritage. All the, all the houses around are not modern style, are very, very old houses. But, well, everyone now goes to this place to see it because it's different, just because of that. So colors really improve the mood of people and, in some way, make make and cause discussions. And because of that discussions, well, people, some people like and some people don't like, and that kind of discussions are very important for our life and for the way how we understand the world. And of course, we have done some kind of research. I, don't, I didn't put any percentage here, but uh, it's just to understand that for me, the, the, the first, the fourth, and the fifth questions are the most important. So I, I had made some questions, for example, about the meaning of the colors, if the color could, could make people feel happy or not. And of course, as you can see in the dark blue, the majority of people said yes. So colors have some kind of meaning. So, it's something that we should discuss. For example, inside of this building, at this building, when we enter in this building, I never expected to have an amphitheater with yellow and blue. So I was much more happy, and I remember yesterday when I entered here, that I, I feel like, wow, 
Of course, it's nothing in special, but because of the colors, my feeling and my happiness interior, I feel much more different because I'm here. And then, for example, I asked uh, if the green color it should be the most positive color. Because I try to understand if the green, because in my country, green it means happiness, it means something that it is very happy. But I want to know if in the other countries uh, the green is happy, because usually people think in yellow, for example, for happiness. But well, yellow I discover here in Vilnius and in other countries where I'm doing this research, that yellow is connected to the triangle because I have too, met, too much light. So in some way, it's like electric color. It's something that it is uh, aggressive. So it seems that it is happy because it changes our mood very faster. So it is more light than, than uh, red, for example. But in almost all countries, I discover that the triangle is yellow for almost everyone. But the, the, the square and the circle, in some places one is blue and the other is red, and, the, and in other places is on contraire. For example, in my country, and I saw that in Italy, for example, the, the circle is almost all the time red. Maybe because, I don't know, I need to discover that, but it is almost red, maybe because it's really the point, you know? And for us, maybe the red, it's like the point. What? It's a tomato. Yes, it's a tomato. Yes, it could be. And it's very important in our food. <laughs> but uh, if I come, for example, to, to Vilnius, I discover that for, for the children, because we have done some exercise, they prefer to put red in the square. Because for them, the red, it's, uh, it means uh, something calm and quiet. So for them, it's happiness. And they feel that the square is something strong because don't move <coughs> like the circle. So the circle is soft, but it is not quiet, it's not calm, you know. So for them, they feel that the red should be in the, in, the, in the square because it's strong. It's like the father. It's something that is there to support them. You understand? And the blue, it's for the circle in this case because it moves, it's more soft. Well, so this is another discussion, but this is just to understand what I'm thinking and why I'm so crazy sometimes. So, of course, colors have different meanings, and meanings we can, we can uh, try to establish some kind of contacts between colors, and we know that some colors we can say they have that they are cold, and the others we can say that they are more uh, hot. And, of course, we can say that the red is more hot, and the green or the blue is more Cold. Everyone understands that because it's a question of feeling, of interior. Sometimes we don't have explanation for that. But for example, when we are in China, they associate the red to happiness. And they even have a street named the Happy Street, imagine. So we can see that in China, they say that red is the happy. It means happy. So they use red when they, they want to feel more uh, happy. So this is the happy street in China. But in Japan, the most happy color, for example, it's the orange, not the red. It's similar because it's a hot color too, but it is orange, not red. But for example, if we come to Mediterranean cities, maybe, and this is the case of Lisbon, the yellow is everywhere. Yellow and pink, it's really a colorful city, and usually these cities use this color. Of course, it's because of the materials, of course, it's because uh, um, the, 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 the inks that we have in our regions, I don't know why, but one thing is true. We walk in our cities and we have yellow everywhere. But then, for example, if we go to other countries, for example, these pictures are from uh, an island named Cabo Verde, that it is an island in the, the south of, um, of, the, of the Atlantic, near Africa. You see, they use many, many colors in the city. So they mix because we are not talking about taste, if it is beauty or not, but for them, this is really happiness. And if you know Cabo Verde, for example, they live with music, they live with culture, and this is really a meaning of something very strong for them, because almost all of the houses around, they are made with concrete and they don't paint, they, maybe because they don't have money, or maybe because it's like a question of, of culture, because sometimes it's not always money, it's culture too. But there are some people that want to be different, and when, when they want to be different, they really use many, many colors. And even here, you can see that it is not so bad house for that country, but they live 
the tree and they leave the flowers coming out. So it means that they feel some kind of happiness with the colors and with the, the shape of the scenes. And then if we go to Greece and Turkey and that kind of countries, of course it's the blue, it is the white. So people are trying all the time to find happiness and the meaning of that. But for example, in some countries like your country, for example, I don't understand very well why yet. I'm trying to understand because I'm not from here, but I already understood that violet is a very important color, maybe because of the contrast with the white or of the gray of the, of the, of the sky. I, I still don't know, but what it seems, it seems that it is much more fashion to use these kind of colors in these kind of countries too. So, well, we are, we were talking about colors, about things that we already understand and we know. But now we are going to talk about shapes. And shapes, really, it's, it, it, it means mood, it means perception. How we can understand the shape? Of course, if we look for the first drawing there, if we don't understand, if we don't have a reference of the place, of what it is, because human beings always need to have some kind of reference to understand the world. If we don't have the reference, okay, we say that it is abstract. But all of you, I'm quite sure that some people will say, what a nice painting, and others will say, what is that? It's just some lines, you know. But everyone who is trying at this moment, according to their own culture, is trying to understand the meaning of that, you know. And I can tell you what it is the meaning of that, because it's a drawing made by me. <laughs> I know, but if I will tell you what it is, you don't have your own idea. And because you are talking about mood, and I'm talking about expression and perception, if I will tell you what it is, we are entering the world of technology, of technique. So, well, in this, in this question, I think it's better to don't tell you. But I will tell you because I think that you have some kind of curiosity. So this is a street, the red part is the street, and on the, on the right side, on the left side, there are some trees, you can see the circles, and the black lines like this are some buildings on the other side of the street. Now, because I told you this, you are uh, at this moment thinking, oh, what a ugly drawing, what he has done there, why he is a building, or why that trees are like that, you understand? But other people can say, oh, finally, I understand this, because it was so strange, but now I can feel something, okay? But here, for example, this is an abstract drawing again, but, but because of the, the type and, and the size of the shapes, in our memory, we can feel that, okay, this could be human beings. Okay, this, this one could be uh, sleeping, this one is stand up, this is uh, maybe a, fo uh, a frog, and this maybe could be waves, because in my culture I have the sea all the time in front of me, so when I see these things, I can feel that it is waves. But maybe for your culture you can say that it is a different thing. So I don't know who have done this drawing, I don't know what it means, but for me, I can interpret it like this, because my perception in the point of view of my culture means this. But for you, it could mean a different thing. Why? Because our brain is always trying to find references and try to understand the world. Of course, when we see, for example, that three squares on the, on the beginning, what we should say about that? It's only squares. Of course, the first one, it's a regular square, nothing. We don't have nothing to tell. But on the second on the, and on the third one, we have expression. And because we have expression, we already have something to say. We can say that uh, it is made with steel. We can say that the guy who had done the drawing it was nervous. OK, we can say many, many things. It depends on our point of view. And it depends on our culture, again. And over there, there are lines, just lines. But we can say that the first one, it's just a line. But the second, it's a, a line made with someone nervous. And the third, well, it's more aggressive because of that kind of movement, you know? So we can invent and we can imagine stories about what we are seeing. Because if we are talking about perception, we are always talking about mood. And again, because of the, the shape and the color, we can understand that, well, here, this is just a very ugly house for me. Maybe for others it isn't, but this is just a house. It's white with some squares and rectangles that there are windows and doors. But here, if you see, it is exactly the same. But they are different. They have more things to tell about this because they paint. And because they paint, the feeling is totally different just because of the color. 
So I can say that, well, I don't agree, or I can say I like, or I don't like, or I just can say, like I told you in the beginning, I live in the pink house, or I live in the green house, because if I live in the white house, it's just the white house, okay? So, the colors, one more time, uh, uh, are improving uh, our, our mood and the way how we interpret the space. So, the place revolves itself on, the, on its streets, on the memories, and on people who walk on the street. So architecture, shape and color are directly connected with this. But in the middle of this, we should have light, because without light, we don't feel the color. Well, there are some kind of experiences that people, that they are blind, they say that they feel the color. Well, I don't have that experience, I don't know how to explain that, but this is another world. But one more time, we are talking about perception and we are talking about heritage, we are talking about the streets. And imagine a, a, a walk site like this that have some kind of paintings. Well, what should we do? For example, in this first one, the, the woman is there, it seems that she will fall down. But because it's art at the same time, we respect that. And I know and I'm quite sure that no one will walk over that, that painting. Because for one side, we are talking about the painting, so it's art, we are respecting that, even if we don't like it. But at the same time, we are afraid to fall down because uh, our brain, it turns confused. It's like virtual reality. You know, and on the other side, we can feel exactly the same. And there are so many examples like this in our cities. So happiness, it's always connected to beauty. And it is really strong to understand happiness. But here we can see, again, some more music in, in, our, in our buildings. This is just a simple building like the other, that it was so only white. But because they put glass with many colors, the building is much, much more um, it's like if we are listening to music, have a rhythm, okay? So, and here, for example, we are talking about contrast, we are talking about imposition. You can see three different types of buildings. One is totally high, very aggressive because they have some kind of corners. The other have colors and it is more soft because it's more circular. And then we have a heritage place over there. So there are many people who will say, why these buildings are there? I don't care as an architect. But what I can say is that uh, it's a reference. So everyone in that city knows that uh, that heritage zone is near that building, or that this building is near that heritage zone. So there are many, many examples of art in the streets. As you can see, many examples that improve the mood of people in heritage places. I can tell you, for example, that this house here, it's in front of my house, it's always the same. Each year, they change the drawings, they make really beautiful drawings, and you can't imagine how many tourists go there just to take pictures of these, you know? And this is, if you, if you see this with light, it's just a house with very ugly windows and a very ugly roof, nothing more. But because of the ink and the painting, it seems that it is really something special, and it is. It is a icon from the city. And here you can feel, for example, in my city, you have a, a, a very, uh, it's that one, a, um, a Jewish uh, uh, street, very dark, very gray, and even because of the buildings are very beautiful, because the buildings of the right side are heritage are from the Jewish time, they are very, very beautiful, but because of the color of the, city, of the, of the street, they seem more sad. And here, the buildings are very ugly too, but because they have lots of colors, people feel much more happy there. So, sorry, here. So we have many examples of using of color. I'm trying to accelerate this a little. This is inside of the house. You see very empty walls, but just because of the use of colors, we are creating atmosphere, we are creating spaces, you know? And even in Rio de Janeiro, now because of the, the, the championship of the world, the football, no, no, because of the Olympic Games, in the favelas, you know, they, they gave colors and they paint the favelas like this. Of course, we can say what the ugly thing they have done, but well, people from there, they feel so happy, it's like they are screaming, we are here, we are happy people, we like where we live. So this is heritage too. And now it is a touristic point because there are many people that go there just to see that. This is another example in Portugal that it is to match that very, it's a, like an art pop architect in Portugal. He likes to work with many, many colors. Many people don't like him because of the use 
of colors, but one thing is true, everyone knows the place is because of his buildings. <laughs> And here, it's another Portuguese architect that only used white color. So without shadow, without light, these buildings don't have the same significance. But it, it means that they have some kind of expression as well. These two buildings are from the, the same architect. We already talked about the first one. And this is the second one. So this is concrete, but that it is the true concrete. And this is concrete with some kind of pigment that changed the color. So it is orange. And this is from the same architect the, of the warehouse. And well, I try to finish uh, very fast now, but what I want to say is that the meaning of the colors, the shapes, and the mood of people always change because of happiness. And the way how we understand our happiness, it depends on our culture, and our mentality, and our memories of the past. And I think in some way that colors and shapes really improve our mood. So we should take care always when we dress, and we should take care always when we make a house, or even when we are writing a paper. My students, and I'm a, I'm a teacher in university, my, teach, my students, they know that I don't accept, really I don't accept, I don't accept any drawing or any exercise that it is not well done. But well done, it doesn't mean that it is perfect, because perfection for me is for a machine, and I don't care about that. What I want is clean hands, the paper should be uh, very, very well uh, um, uh, striped, you understand? And the lines should be lines, should be not shadows, should be not just simple things. So people should feel what they are, what they are doing and they should explain why they have done something in the, according that way. So that's my point of view about life. So it's to give space for people to explain them ideas and at the same time we should try to make an effort to understand. And colors in some way open that door. Because people, when we have a room like this, feel much more happy than if we are inside of a dark room, for example. Because our bad memories from our past come to our brain again. So when we are in a happy place, we feel much more happy. And you see, when you are talking with someone that is saying something, well, sometimes it's not so important than what I was uh, telling now, but just because I'm talking about happiness, I can see some people that are smiling. So I'm much more happy now because <laughs> I feel that I have learned something for someone, I don't know in some way, but sorry to disturb you with this strange subject in this university, but well, architects are always crazy and I'm one of them. Thank you. Thank you.